today I thought I would share with you how to make some coffee filter flowers. It might look like I'm in the at the florist, but I'm actually in my kitchen. And these are all the coffee filter flowers that you can make. Carnations, long stem roses, but full bloomed roses. And today I thought I would share with you how to make purple poppies made from coffee filters. And I think that they're really nice. And my paper poppies or my purple paper poppies are going to replace my carnations. So I'm just freshening up the look of my table. We're now in summer. And I thought I would just give it a little bit of a lift. Plus, I got the idea for the purple poppies because a viewer had asked me if I'd ever made poppies with the coffee filter. And like I mentioned to her, once I come up with a template and I've actually made them and I like the way that they look, that I would share a video with you. And I was actually going to a wedding. I was going to my niece's wedding and I was wearing a hat. I had purple shoes and I was going to use the flowers in the hat. Unfortunately, I got sick. I missed the wedding. So I ended up making a whole bunch of other purple poppies to adorn my table as a consolation prize. So all you're going to need for this, for each poppy, you're going to need two coffee filters. And the coffee filters that I'm talking about are the ones that are for a basket. So, so these larger coffee filters are for eight to 12 cups. These smaller coffee filters are four to six cups. And you can see the difference in size. And you can use both. You're just going to get two different size flowers. So this flower is made with the large coffee filter. And this flower is made with the smaller coffee filters. So there's just a little bit of a difference in size, if you can see. The center is also different, and I'll show you how to make those. So the basket coffee filters come like this, and there's hundreds of them in a pack. And I know that you can order them from Amazon if you can't find them locally. I can find mine at the grocery store, at the dollar store, etc. And in case you're wondering, the actual width of the large coffee filters are seven and a half inches in diameter. And this is the eight to 12 cups. And then the four to six cups, these are six and a half in diameter. So they're only slightly smaller, but they do make a smaller flower as you can see. Now the poppies that I'm making or the species of poppies really only has four to six petals. So there are very few petals in each flower, which makes it very difficult to replicate just using a coffee filter. But what I've done is I've used two coffee filters and it's going to create eight petals. And even though these may not be 100% as they are in nature, they certainly are effective and that's the way I made it. So we're gonna need two coffee filters to make our actual poppy, whether you're using this, making the small poppy or the large poppy. And we're going to need an extra filter or two or more if you're going to be making some leaves. And we're going to try making some leaves, although I will tell you the leaves are quite tricky to make because they're very frilly, uh, a little bit difficult, but I'll show you how to do what I did. Or you can just buy satin leaves from the dollar store. And then we're going to need, and then one filter to cut the stamen in the center as you can see here. So for the center, we're going to need a stripe of black, a stripe of yellow. We're going to need some just cutoffs of uh, the coffee filters dyed in green or yellow, and that's going to represent the center of the flower. We're 
We're going to need some food coloring. We're going to need some black paint, and this is acrylic black paint, and I'll show you why. A little bit of water, a couple of toothpicks, some paint brushes, a black magic marker. We're going to need uh, some scissors to cut, and we're gonna need our food coloring. And all I've done, and this actually works out great, this is just uh, part of the plastic where your eggs come in, but it works out really good to see exactly what your colors look like. So I use them to mix my colors. And really the key to making these flowers uh, realistic because we don't have a lot of petals, like in the flowers that we can play, like in the roses that we can play with, twist. We only have four simple petals. So it's really important how we dye the color of the actual petals. And it's really important how nicely we make the center. Now we're also going to need for the center some either paper towel and we're also going to need some floral wire, the 18 gauge, as well as some bendable plastic straws. And this is going to create that thick stem like this that we can bend in order to create that shape or create the look of a real poppy. So the first thing that we need to do is dye coffee filters. And I know that in the past that we've dyed them in, submerged in water with the the food coloring. But this time we're actually going to paint full strength concentrated food coloring directly on the little sheets of paper. And we're going to be working with two coffee filters at a time. And that is because we want the concentration of color and we need the center of our papers to be the most concentrated. So you can see it's darker in the center and it gets light as it goes around. And that's really the basis for creating that depth that you see in the flower. It's going to make it look more realistic. So the way that I created, and I decided to go with purple, so I was playing around with different colors, different shades of pinks and blues and mauves and purples. And for that, I was using my red, my blue. And in some, I even added some yellow to try and deepen the color of the center of the paper. Filters, which I'm just laying on a pizza pan. And I'm just gonna mix my colors. So I want something that looks purple. So I'm gonna add So I've just added one dab of red, two dabs, and then three dabs. And then I'm gonna add two dabs of blue. And this is just going to give me um, a variation in the depth of color of that I'm actually mixing. This see-through egg carton because you can, it gives you, uh, you're able to see the, the paint more clearly. And then all you're gonna do is take your paintbrush and you're gonna wet your coffee filter. I like to paint it on because it gives me more control. Now on my pizza pan, I would do probably three at a time, and these are double layered. So I'm doing two coffee filters at once. This is really uh, very much as though you are doing a painting with watercolor. So what I start off by doing is I take the concentrated, you can see that looks pretty black. So I just take my concentrated color and just apply it directly on. Remember I'm using all concentrated colors on a wet coffee filter. And then from here, you just want to flare that color out. 
you just want to leave a quarter edge all the way around and just you can see how you can keep pulling that color out and then just stop whenever you like the effect it you can see how it's dark in the center and it's lighter on the outsides and then you're going to flip this over and you want to make sure that you've got the other side as well so then the next one i'll do two more that's very very deep purple so just with plain water I want to make sure that it's saturated but I don't want it to be sopping wet because I do want the center to be really dark so now I'm gonna try I'm gonna add a little bit more red and I want to create maybe a more purple purple ish and you can see now one thing that you can do if you've added too much water or if you've added too much water and it's running away from you, just dab it and soak up some of that water with a paper towel so that you can control, so that you can control the flow of your paint. And actually, I wanna make this flower lighter. And just by adding some water to the center, I can dilute that center and spread the tone from the center out. So you can see the difference in tones. So this is much pinker and redder, and this is much darker. And there's no right or wrong you just want to be creative but here is kind of what it will look like this one is darker purple and blue and i think you can see that and you don't have to make all of your petals this color because what i did do is i made some that were quite dark in the center and these do lighten up when you dry them you're going to dry them in the oven at 250 degrees for five to ten minutes maybe five minutes because we're only we're, we've only layered two sheets of coffee filter so this is going to dry probably in five minutes in a 250 degree oven so i just made a whole bunch because i knew i was going to make 12 of these purple poppies and they don't all have to be the same and you can mix and match and that's exactly what i did i took one that was dark in the center and paired it with one that wasn't dark in the center and then you get this layer of a lighter petal on the outside with the darker petal on the inside and you can be creative by adding. i actually use this little sponge to try and create some dots you can do whatever you like just be creative and make the colors um as exotic as you like but just remember part of that realism is making the center petals darker in the center so now i'm going to put this in the oven at 250 degrees i'm going to dry for about five minutes and then i'm going to come back and show you the next step get it all crispy and nice and dry so now for the next step is we want to dye all our other pieces of coffee filters to create the whole flower if you're going to be making leaves then you want to dye some coffee filters in various uh, greens. Also, we're going to be making not only a leaf, but we're going to be making a bud, which is shaped like this. And I used one whole coffee filter twisted in this oval shape to create a bud. And the buds uh, and the leaves add a little bit of contrast they look interesting and i think they look nice if you're doing a full bouquet so again you want to paint on straight high concentration 
of your color if you want it to turn out um, as bright as the. And for the leaf bud, I just paint different colors that I'd like to see. Some yellow, green, I've added a bit of red. And you just wanna do a tie-dyed effect because when we make the buds and roll them up, then you're gonna get uh, this variation in color and it's gonna make them look a little bit more realistic. Our sheets are nice and dry. So these are the ones painted with acrylic and they are actually sticking to the pan. So you're gonna have to let them dry naturally. They do stick together, I had to pull them apart. So it doesn't go through um, as much as the other. So if you're using acrylic paint, you might have to do one sheet at a time. But just to give you an idea of the translucency. So this is the food coloring up against the light. And this is the acrylic up against the light. You can see that this is much more opaque than the food coloring. The acrylic paint makes a mess on your pan, whereas the food coloring, there's just a few spots of so water. These will be good for leaves. They're also good for the buds. Then any leftover little pieces of the coffee filter, and actually, I took a coffee filter, folded it in half, so to make the centers, and I cut these pieces out before I painted them because I didn't want to waste time and I didn't want to waste food coloring on dyeing a whole sheet that I wasn't going to use. So I just took the coffee filter, fold it in half, and now I'm going to create these stripes. And I want to create about a, a one inch width stripe, and this is going to be for the black stamen. So all I did was I came in an inch this, and this is going to be the black stamen, and everything is going to be paired in two. So we're gonna paint them in two, we're gonna paint one side, we're gonna paint the other. Now for the black, I could not get it dark enough to my liking to create the stamen the way it is in real life. I just couldn't do it with the food coloring. So I did use black acrylic paint, and this is just inexpensive paint that I bought from the dollar store to paint my strips, my one inch strips for the stamen, and that's how they turned out. And then for the yellow, and for the yellow, it's just, you're really just creating the tips at the end of the black stamen. So all I did was I just cut some thicker strips. I painted them yellow and then I came in and after they were painted yellow like this and just cut them in half to create or to get a half inch strip because what we're going to do is we're going to take our one inch black we're gonna glue, we're gonna take our one inch black, we're going to glue on our half inch yellow like this, because this is what we want to see. We just wanna see a little line of yellow. These two together, you're going to need a glue stick. It works really well and it keeps the paper pliable uh, because this is going to be our stamen. Now, just another word on Oh, so once you cut your coffee filter to get these strips for the center and the stamen, you're just left over with pieces. So whether you cut up a coffee filter, you just want pieces about this size. So you just want to dye this, and this is going to be the center of the stamen. We've got a ball. We're going to wrap this around the ball. So those are all our pieces that we are painting or dyeing. Now, viewers had asked me if they can use acrylic paints instead of the coffee filter. And you can, but it changes change the texture 
it changes the color and it changes the translucency of the paper so you can see and I'll show you in an overhead how I've dyed this yellow with the food coloring and this yellow with the acrylic paint This you can see through, it's much more vibrant. This is still yellow, but it's not quite as vibrant. And the softness of the paper, as opposed to this is much stiffer. So you can do it, but it's going to change the look slightly. So now that we know how to dye all of our papers, now we're ready to assemble our flowers. We're gonna go over to the other table and I'm gonna show you how to put them together. It's really quite easy. So now we're at the table and I've got everything organized. So we've got, to make one flower, we're going to need a strip of our black, a strip of our yellow, two coffee filters, We're going to need a one inch styrofoam ball, or you can make your own with some paper towel. We're going to need the flexible straw. We're going to need an 18 gauge wire that I've just put a little curl on the end. So I've used some needle nose pliers to do that. We're gonna need some glue sticks. We're going to need our glue gun and we're going to need black thread. And this is going to create the separation in the center of the stamen as there, you can see that center part you see how it's got all the little divisions that's created with the thread. And by the way, you can make the steam in two different ways. You can add the yellow so that you get this effect and the center uh, is green. Or you can just do it with the black and the center is yellow. So it's up to you. I made the small ones with the center yellow and uh, the dark stamen and I made the large ones with the yellow and the black, but it's up to you. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut out our petals and set them off to the side. And one of these petals is going to be slightly larger than the other. So we're going to fold our petals. The one with the dark center we're going to keep as the smaller petal because it's going to be on the inside of the flower. And then the one with the lighter color is going to be the outer petals. So now we've got our two pieces of paper. The inner petal is going to be the one with the dark spot. The outer petal is going to be the light one. So the inner petal is actually the smaller of the two petals. All you're gonna do is you're going to fold it over in half like this. We're going to fold it over again. So you've got a little pie. And this is how much we're going to cut out. And you can see that we're cutting from this all the way around to here. You just want to scallop the end. There's no rhyme or reason because you'll see we're just creating what looks like just a little ripply effect. And then all we're going to do, we want to slice off just a tiny bit. I mean, a tiny bit to create a hole. When you open it, it looks like this. And we just want to cut into the sides and we want to leave about an inch in the middle. You see? So we just want to separate the petals slightly. 
not too far down because it does give it structure, but see? So that our center petal looks like this. And then with the outer petal, we're gonna do the same thing, fold it over once, fold it over twice. You're creating a pie shape. Then we're gonna take our larger petals you can see and just trace that like that we're going to do the same thing as the little petal we're just going to cut off a little tiny bit just so our wire can fit through there when we thread it and you can see that with the larger one the petals are even more um, attached so again, we're just gonna cut it, leaving about an inch at the end without going through like that. Cut it there. So this is our large petal, which is gonna go on the outside. And this is the smaller petal that's gonna go in the inside. So you can see there isn't a huge difference, but there will, it will make a difference once we put it together. So now we've got our petals and we're gonna set those aside. So then the next thing that we want to do is start with our stem and our little ball. And like I said, you don't have to use the styrofoam ball. You can certainly use um, paper towel for this. And this is my small glue gun, which I'm using the low temperature glue. Oh, I should have showed you. Then we're just gonna take that wire that has the little hook and we're just going to put it in there and that's just securing it. And I didn't show you, but all you wanna do to the end Take the little wire and bend it. And you wanna bend it to give you a little tail, like that. And that really helps hold the little ball in place really well. And then those little scrap pieces of paper that we just added um, just some concentrated dye, green or yellow or whatever color you like, but I think the green looks nice, as does the yellow. And we're gonna use this to wrap around our little ball. Now I don't need all of this, and this is just a scrap. So I'm just gonna cut it so it's about this size. I mean, it's, it doesn't have to be exact. Now, another thing that works really well with this is using the glue stick because I find that using the glue gun makes it, it dries too quickly and it actually makes the little center lumpy. So we just take our little piece of paper and add the glue stick and uh, this creates a nice, it almost makes the paper a little bit stretchy as well. So it, it makes it really nice to uh, manipulate and you can really smooth it out very nicely over the ball. So then it looks like that, you see? So now we've got our little ball. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we want to create those individual uh, segments of the, um, the middle of the flower. We're gonna use some black thread. Now, if you used embroidery thread, it would go a lot faster because there's like six strands per, uh, per thread, but we're using, we're using just single thread. So we're gonna have to wind it up a couple of times. So all I do is, I take the thread, wind it around a couple of times that way, and then I'm careful to wind it across the ball, like so. And if you pull it a little bit tight, you create uh, somewhat of an indent that makes it easy 
to continue. So I wrap it around until the line, until the little line is visible. Then I wrap it a couple of times and I go the other way and do it about 10 times. Or until you think it's visible enough. Wrap it around. And I'm essentially cutting this into eight segments with the thread. Go around and then, oh, it looks like I've, huh. It looks like I've got enough segments. Okay, so there you go. And then I just wrap it around. This is how I finish it, wrap it around. Cut it off. And then I actually do add a bead of glue down here. Uh-oh, jeepers. Look it, it fell on the little ball. It fell on the little styrofoam ball and melted it. So then I just add, just add a little tiny bead of glue there. And at this point, I'll add some floral tape. And floral tape is stretchy and waxy and sticky. And you can just pull it apart. So I add my little bead of glue and then I'll just add my little bit of floral tape. Like that just to really hold it in place. Now you don't want to make this too thick because remember we're gonna to have to run our flower through the wire. We're gonna pull it through the wire. So you don't want to make that too thick so that our flower can go through it. And at this point just straighten out the little ball. And I actually do add one bead. You don't have to but I add one bead on top. It just looks like a raindrop and it just gives me the assurance to keep my little threads all in place. Now that I've got the little ball, I want to create the stamen. And the way that I'm going to do that is by just a strip of black, which is about one inch. And then I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to overlap it top. So I'm just going to glue it like this. And I find that um, the best glue for this is definitely your glue stick. And I just try and take, I take the straightest line that I can. Oops. And I just attach the two and you can see my yellow is a little off kilter. You can just cut it so it's straight. It's hard to get all these little pieces of paper like 100% straight, so it's okay. You can just come back and, and trim it off. And you just want a little bit of the yellow peeking up. You can even, uh, like I said, you can do it without the yellow at all and just do the stamen um, all black. If you're using the glue stick, it almost gives it uh, it gives it a different texture. It makes it more pliable, which I really like. So we are going to be adding the dark side on the inside of, we're gonna be gluing it around the ball this way because when we're looking at it from the top, we wanna to be able to see all the dark stamen going around. So dark side closest to the little ball. But before we do that, I take a skewer and this is just going to give the stamen a little curl, little tiny, tiny curl. And like I said, this flower is not difficult to make. It only has the two coffee filters. So essentially it only has the two petals that we're putting together. 
So if you take a little extra time, take it in um, dyeing your coffee filters and take it in, uh, take a little extra time in making the center of the stamen because that's what makes it look realistic. So and you can see, I, I'm not curling it all the way. I'm just curling the yellow over like that. And I just, just to give it a little texture. And then I'm just going to come in. I'm actually just going to cut off the ends so that they're nice and even. I'm just gonna come in and make a whole bunch of little cuts, not all the way down. So we're creating a, this little tiny fringe. You see, we're just cutting all the way along, creating this little fringe. After we glue it on, when we open it up, we can unfurl these and make them look realistic. So I'm just gonna continue cutting this all the way along. Then you're left with something like this. That's the back where we glued the yellow. And this is the front where it's just going to, this is the front that when we unroll these little curls, it's going to, the stamen's going to look dark. This is the part that we're gluing on the ball. So dark side on the inside like this. And we're gonna wrap it all the way around but we're only going to glue it center. And then we're just going to do this and we're gonna twirl it around and curl it all the way around. So you can see, you can see, and while the glue is still a bit warm and moist, then I just glue it down. So it looks like this. And when we unfurl it, you can see how that black really stands out. And it's gonna look like this. The next step is we're going to start with the inside petal and we're going to, um, before we do that, we're gonna take the inside petal, we're gonna grab it by the tip, and we're going to squish it. Now what we're essentially doing is we're creating pleats or wrinkles in the paper, and then we're gonna twist it like that. Then we're gonna take the outside petal, we're gonna do the same, pull it down, really squish it flat, squish it together, creating those pleats. And then we're going to twist. So it's a little twist like that. And then gently you want to unfurl your petals. And don't unfurl them too much because you don't want to lose the texture and the texture is really um, what gives life to the flower. If we did not crease the petals, um, it wouldn't look like much. So there's the center petal. And now from here, all we're gonna do is we're going to put our petal, our stem, through the hole, like this. And I just leave about that much of a gap. I'm gonna add a bead of glue there and just glue that in place. So I just add a bead of glue. To the bottom. And just glue it in place like that.
So this is the beginning of our so now we've got our flower which is attached like this and I just position the petals so that they're equally um, spread apart I just spread the bottom part a little bit like this I just spread the bottom part a little bit like that just so that they're evenly spread apart as you can see and then we're going to take the next set of petals the outer petals we're going to do the same thing we're going to bring it up so i'm going to position those petals so that one petal overlaps between these two petals and once i've kind of got it in place I just pinch it on the bottom I hold it and I'm gonna add some glue around the bottom here and then I'm just going to slowly position my petals so that they look like this so here we go Just add a bit of glue and then I just carefully make sure that I'm positioning those petals in between the other two petals so it's just a little bead of glue to hold everything in place but I'm actually going to do more than that I'm gonna take each petal I'm going to take each petal where these two petals meet here where those two petals meet I'm going to put a little dab of glue there and I'm going to secure the petal right down here I don't want to do it up here because I, I want to make sure that the petals have some movement but I also want to make sure that they stay in place so again where these two petals meet just a little dab of glue like that and then when i push that petal you can see how it's glued right there you can see it's glued in between those two petals overlap the two little petals and just add a bead of glue down here bead of glue there. can you see the bead of glue there and it's starting to create the effect what I do in order to create more of this cup effect is I will take these two petals that are overlapping and I'm going to tack them just down here together overlapping I'm just going to tack them down down here to create that cup effect so I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right there overlap that little petal and tack it and you can see it creates this bowl little shape it's starting to create the shape as opposed to it being separate like that you just do a little overlap shape that then creates this uh, really nice ruffled flower or poppy where you have a lot of depth and that's pretty well it now you've got your flower now you can play with this and scrunch it up a little bit um, you can furl roll the petals to give it some interest you can roll some um, forward or out if you we're going to add a little bit of the tape to the outside of the flower pulling and turning pull and turn and you just want a little bit of that 
And then we're going to take our straw and we're going to just cut the top like this, fold it the other way, cut it like that. And it's just going to create these little legs, which are going to help adhere the flower. So all we're going to do is take our stem, feed it through our straw. When we get to here, I'm going to add glue. around the base of the flower, and then I just push that straw in. You can see the little arms open up and really attach nicely to the flower. Then you're gonna let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna add another bead of glue inside the straw. And this is just going to attach our wire more closely. And then I'm just going to take and nip off the ends. And don't throw away these little um, pieces of wire because I did make some of these poppies for um, a hat. And this is the perfect length. If you're doing a small poppy, you can use it for a bouquet or a corsage or on your hat, which I will show you. So now that that is secure, and you can see this is dry because it's I can flatten it out like that. Then we're just going to get a nice long piece of our tape. And by the way, I previously stretched out the straw. You don't want to leave it all stuck together. It is stretched out, not fully. I don't know if you can see the ribs, not fully stretched out because I want to leave enough for it to bend, you see? But for now, let's keep it straight. And It might help to add a little bead of glue to the straw. Just to get it going. And this adheres pretty nicely. If you've never worked with floral tape before, um, you just have to give it a bit of a stretch, stretch and turn stretch and turn so that as you were doing it this way you're twirling you're stretching a little bit and twirling like this and the tape sticks to it quite nicely and now you've got the flexibility of turning your flower into something special So for our bud, we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to cut just like a quarter of an inch that way, cut a quarter of an inch this way, and we're just creating this four little legs, like so, that will attach easily. And stretch out your straw. And then we're just going to add some glue to the base. Add some glue to the base. I'm going to add some glue to the bottom. Let that dry. And then we're going to come in with floral tape. And this time I can start the floral tape pretty far up because it's almost the same color as my bud. So there you have your bud. And this is where 
you can create those the way that these um, grow in the poppies and you can see that it adds it adds some interest for sure I'm gonna have this one hanging down the color and the interest now in terms of the leaves I wasn't actually going to make the leaves because they're too difficult to make or to replicate they're very furly and um, light and fluffy but I did come up with uh, a pattern that I think works and it looks like this and it's just a very squiggly pattern, which I'll cut out. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry. So I'm going to take one of my dyed green um, coffee filters and I'm going to lay this pattern out. I did do in order to because this is very uh, flimsy is I took my leaf once it was cut out like this as a solid and with my glue stick I went over the entire leaf oops So I went over the entire leaf and I let it dry. And what this did is it created um, a little bit of a layer of a, almost gave it a plasticized kind of texture, but it did firm it up. This, once it's dried, it's almost plasticized it and it's much um, firmer then without it so I did that let it dry so we're going to pretend that I did this and let this dry and then all I did was fold down the center like this then I took my wire right down the center I placed my wire along the glue and the fold and then I folded it and just glued it along this rim I've just added the bead of glue right down the center I've added I've just left this little tip alone so I got it in there and then I just fold it right around the wire I don't fold the whole thing. I just want to fold it right along the edge so that the wire is just sandwiched in between the paper. So when you open it up, you don't see the wire. You just see the crease. So this does not look like a leaf yet. So then after I did that, I took my floral tape and now for this I did it directly on the wire because you can either use the leaves on their own like this or you can attach it to the bud which we made the stem for the bud with the straw so it's much thicker and this just makes it easier to attach if you want it and if not you can just um, allow this to you can put it into your bouquet just on its own so after, this doesn't look much like a leaf so I just came in and I just made I just made little cuts like this wherever I thought it would look interesting So just little cuts along the way. So I just did little cuts like this. And then here you can bend your leaf so that it has just a little bit more of a, you know, feathery look. And that's all. If you're making the leaves like this, it definitely gives it a crafted folk art 
look if you added um, some silk leaves from say from uh, the dollar store or anywhere else that you would buy some silk leaves like real leaves I think it would definitely make the bouquet look a lot more realistic so I think the bouquet looks really great it's gonna be really nice on my dining room table the paper um, leaves they don't look as realistic as maybe the flowers do so it's kind of a bit of a get giveaway in terms of the bouquet but i think this is paper art so i think the paper leaves make it look authentic that it is a piece of art not exactly a, a replica of the real flowers but if you did want to make these look more realistic then definitely i would buy the silk uh, leaves if you can find them that are correct for the poppies and otherwise I think this looks really great I'm really happy with the way it turned out I think they all look fantastic I love the way that you can bend all the little flowers and it's just amazing what you can make with coffee filters I'm always surprised every time I try a new flower and it actually works out so if you try making these flowers and you like them, I hope that you share them. If you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe and keep on drinking that coffee and buying those coffee filters because you never know what else we can make with them. Happy flower making.